Get ready to dive into a world where empires stand on the brink of war and terrible monsters tear at the fragile borderlands of men. The Adventurer Conqueror King System Imperial Imprint, or as we like to call it, Axe 2, is now live on Kickstarter. Axe 2 is the new edition of the acclaimed best-selling fantasy role-playing game. You'll find everything you need to enjoy epic fantasy campaigns with a sweeping scope. Whether you want to crawl through dungeons, experiment with alchemy, crossbreed monsters, run a merchant emporium, raise an undead legion, or even conquer an empire, Axe 2 supports your playstyle. Axe 2 integrates experience point mechanics, making campaign activities a seamless part of the core gameplay loop. Your character levels up in new and exciting ways each time you play, adding massive replayability to each of your adventures. Axe 2 offers 18 character classes, 378 spells, new combat mechanics, and so much more. Support Axe 2 on Kickstarter today. We're going to join. You know what? Let's let's start off. Um, we're joining Yui. He is walking through the Feywild right now, kind of obliviously. Yui, go ahead and give us some like where where did your character come from? Tell us his background. Tell him tell us what he looks like. You know that whole ish. Alrighty. So we start off with my character skipping down the Feywild, having a jolly old time. Scene open. You see Yui skipping down the Feywild, humming to himself. He has like some nice little drawings that he's done on his arms and legs. So he's a young, thin, pale white 14 year old boy with like short, lightly red hair. He's wearing like a little vial on his neck. Little background there's been some father figure deaths that have kind of left him a little apathetic to violence. Hashtag daddy issues. <laughs> But, uh, you know, has a big emphasis on fun, so he's skipping around the Feywild just trying to have a jolly time. Awesome. And do you know how you got to the Feywild? Ah, well, so got to the Feywild by... Yui doesn't really remember this, but metagame, uh, his quote-unquote father uh, took him to the Feywild to escape a group called the Lambs of Slaughter, oh. which believed Yui to be their property. All right, you're skipping along through some trees, and go ahead and roll me a perception check, Yui. Well, that's a three. <laughs> so that's going to be actually nine. Nine? Yeah. All right. Uh, unfortunately, you're looking around, and like a little, uh, like a butterfly goes right on your nose, and you're so happy. And like this overwhelmingly, like this warmth grows in your chest, and then as this warmth Hiya. starts to grow in yeah, this warmth starts to grow in your chest. A arrow comes and thunk right in the chest, right where you're feeling all warm. And you're going to take two points of piercing damage as this arrow shoots from a tree. And then you hear some whistling and then you hear, over here, boss. Oh, no. Well, Yui will quickly summon two daggers in his hands and kind of do like a nice little hop step, like gauging the area. Hi, my name's Yui Yato. What are you guys doing here? We're part of the Lambs of the Slaughter, and you're our property, man. Well, if you guys wanted to play, I'll warn you, I'm pretty good. And then you see uh, as five of these archers kind of, like, position themselves in a circle around you, and then there's one person with a great big sword on their side, and he holds his sword out, and then he yells, Everyone at the ready! And then we're going to roll initiative with that. Alrighty. We'll hope I roll better on initiative than I did on the perception. 16. It's a setup. <laughs> 19. 19. Surprisingly enough, the cultists actually got a natural 20. Half the cultists got a natural 20. The other ones got a 17. So the first group of cultists are going to go first, followed by Jack, followed by the second group of cultists, followed by Yui. The first group of bandits are going to roll to attack you, Yui. Eight to hit your armor class. Does not hit. A 21 to hit your armor class. Yes. Okay, you will take eight points of piercing damage. 
A 14 to hit? No. And an 11 to hit? No. All right. So that is the first group of uh, cultists. And uh, you, how are you doing on hit points? We're doing pretty good. Okay. Awesome. Only minus 10. We're at uh, 21. Sounds good. Uh, we're going to go over to Jack's turn. Jack, go ahead and describe your character and tell me uh, what you're doing in the Feywild. So, Jack is an absolute goon. No, not really, but a bit. He's got some dark brown hair, bright green eyes with some gold flecks in them if the light's right. You know, gorgeous. <laughs> Suntan skin, spends a lot of time wandering. And that's all he's doing in the Feywild. He's looking for entertainment right now. And he sounds like we might have found some. Roll me a perception check. That's a 15. With a 15. <laughs> that's actually what I said it at. Um, with a 15, you hear a commotion in the woods. You hear arrows. Thunk, 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 and you hear a little boy seemingly cry out. What are you doing? <sighs> with laughter. With laughter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Jack was running through the trees, and by through the trees, I mean up in the trees, running on branches, jumping, climbing up, straight up them, just walking up them, because slippers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell them about your magic items. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess I didn't describe my clothes and stuff. So he's wearing plain traveler's clothes for the most part, but two items stand out in particular, one of which is a pair of slippers on his feet, where slippers belong, that are black with white spiderweb pattern on them. Slippers of spider climbing. Yes. yes. <laughs> Spoilers. I feel like slippers is the worst. <laughs> those slippers. They're magic, boy. <laughs> you like using them to hold you up, but you like your feet slip out. <laughs> it's like uh, sneakers that only squeak. <laughs> Squeakers. Squeakers, <laughs> yes. Uh, I only slip. And the other piece of clothing that really sticks out, unless he's up in the trees perhaps, is... A bright or an emerald green robe with silver runes on it. Okay. And then how did you get in the Feywild? Well, a frequent flyer of the Feywild. Um, this most recent visit, I walked through a tree. Nice. Tree portals. Tree portals. All right. We will go into that later more. Yeah. But uh, you hear this commotion going on. Uh, what are you doing? So I'm running through the trees. Tree tops, I guess, and I hear this commotion, and then I hear what sounds like a young voice to me, and I stop, I keep listening, still hearing some more commotion. Wow, you guys aren't very good at this, are you? <laughs> As they miss three shots against you. And he takes a deep breath. <sighs> Change of plans, I guess. And he'll turn towards the sound and start going that way. Nice, okay. So you were able to make it to the cusp of the trees you're 15 feet away from where yui is mm -hmm. and so you're able to see from there is there anything that you'd like to do with your action um <sighs> you see a young boy uh -huh. surrounded surrounded by okay. armed soldiers uh -huh. who are uh they're led by somebody wearing like cultist clothes that's red with this long sword uh -huh. okay well um let's see so yui is straight up in front of me i've got one on my left and one on my right that I can see. Yep. The others are maybe blocked by trees. Trees, just a little bit. Yep, they have. Cool. Have so covered. there's no time for thinking. There's a small boy in danger or child. I can't. don't know if I identified them as a boy, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, run up, quick assess, and we're going to start with the classic Eldritch Blast. Straight, uh, we're going for the one on the left first. Okay. And that's going to be a 17 to hit. A 17 does hit. Excellent. That's going to be 14 force damage. All right. For the first hit. Where, where are you aiming on this guy? Oh, straight for the dome, dude. Straight for the dome? Cleave. Like, <laughs> like. T go ahead and tell me, describe how you just uh, murdered this old, this old bandit boy. Um, wasn't expecting that. Uh, run up. Look to my left and right. I stick my hands out, one to the left, one to the right. Left one fires off the first Eldritch Blast, and you see this beam of green light fly forward. Connects with his dome and just whiplash, basically. Like, his his head's not going anywhere off his body, but... But if it could, it would. But if it could, it would. You and send it, just it to, the to the rafters. All right. Awesome. Yeah, so he falls over dead. Do you have a second attack? I do. Okay. And so we're going to send the right-hand Eldritch Blast to the one on the right. Okay. 
Um, that's going to be a 27 to hit. Uh, that misses. I'm just kidding. That definitely <laughs> hits. Like, are you serious? Because that was a good roll. And this one, oh, same. 14 damage. 14 damage. Again, tell me how you're going to... how you're going to be the exact same, except now we're going to make it even cooler. Action movie scene. Runs up. Sees the kid in trouble. Hands out to the left and right. Simultaneous blasts and two people drop. Two people drop. All right. So, yeah, you you take care of two of the six of the bad guys, basically. And I don't know if Yui has noticed you quite yet, but they are fully dead. What's going on? Wow. That was quite the surprise. I guess you're on my team then. The other three bandits seeing Jack come through the trees and killing uh, two of their members are going to all take fires at you, Jack. Rude. That is a natural one to hit. Nice. Love it. Definitely misses. He deals max damage to one of his buddies oh, and no. totally shoots uh, one of his buddies all the way dead. Just fires at you and then it goes like it whiffs through the off of a tree and ricochets and it just hits one of his buddies in the chest who falls down dead and is like, Brian! Sorry, Brian. And that's what we call luck. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, another one is going to take its attack at you. That is going to be a 21 to hit. And that will hit. Gotcha. Okay, and you will take nine points of piercing damage. All right, I sure will. And uh, Brian is dead. Yeah, sorry, so Brian. <laughs> that is the end. That is the end of their turn. And with that, there are three cultists left standing. We're going to go to Yui's turn. That was quite surprising. I guess you're on my team and do some nice, like, parkour spinny flips like rolling back towards uh, Jack, who just showed up, while throwing two knives at the one closest to the left. Okay, roll to hit. Like, pass the tree. Like, one when I'm, like, on one side of the tree, and then I pass another tree and, like, throw it on the other. It's it's amazing, you guys. It, it, like, yeah. looks really good. It, the camera footage was also done very well. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was lost for the podcast, so <laughs> yeah. I had my finger over the lens the whole time. Oh, no. It's going to be uh, 23. Uh, that definitely hits. Yes. Yeah. All right. Oh, and I guess I should roll for the second one. And that's going to be a 22. That also hits. Yes. All righty. So the first one's eight damage. All right. You bloody one of these guys. And the second one is five. Okay. Your knife, one of them, like, hits him in the right arm, and he looks down and is, like, looks back up at you. And go ahead and tell me how uh, you do this. So, like, the first one is I'm running on one side, I throw, and it, like, hits him in his left shoulder, so he's kind of, like, off balance, yeah. kind of turned, and then I, like, go around to the other side, throwing it at, like, an angle, so it, like, stabs him in the back, falling forward away from me, and I keep doing my little, like, fancy moves as I back up, standing right in front of uh, Jack now. Nice. And is that the end of your turn? Yes. The leader, surprised at how well you have been able to uh, dispatch everyone, uh, looks at the two of you and is like, okay, like, we're, we're taking the kid. Like, I'm sorry. He's our property. I don't know what you're doing here, but, like, he's ours. And then he's going to cast Inflict Wounds at level two. Dirty 20 to hit. That'll hit. Okay. That is 26 points of necrotic damage. <laughs> okay. Wow. As these black tendrils, like, like, come out from his hands and he says... We were born of violence, and through violence, we are reborn. Not gonna lie, pal, that's metal. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm gonna need you to cut it out. <laughs> and with that, that is the end of uh, the cultist turn. It is your turn, Jack. Oh, no. This dude gets right up in my biz. And what I'm going to do is bonus action, Misty Step. Get 30 feet out of here. Nice, nice. We're going to go straight into the center of the grove where Yui originally was. Right. And then, you know, we're just going to stick with the good old classics. Eldritch Blast again, baby. It worked well. All right. Yeah. Roll to hit. Are you rolling against the bandits or are you rolling against the cultist? Um, the cultist. Okay. Uh, 27 to hit for the first one. Okay. That is going to hit. And the second one, ooh, is a 16. That is also going to hit. Oh, snap. Cool. And let's roll some damage. <laughs> First one's going to be eight damage. Second one is going to be max damage, 15. So a total of 23. 
Yeah. Not thinking of how you were, could ever teleport away from him, he, uh, like, is looking straight at you, and then you're behind him, and your two force blasts hit him, knocking him prone forward. He said the name. Gain an inspiration. Yay! Both of you gain an inspiration. <laughs> wow. New Easy. characters. And you have bloodied him. Oh, snap. So, and with that, is that the end of your turn? Uh, just about. I'm going to call it to Yui. I'm still on your team, kid. Finish him off. It is going to be the bandit's turn. Uh, not really knowing what to do, I guess. They're seeing that the cultist guy attacked you last, Jack. They're also going to attack you. I am close to him. <laughs> Does a five hit? <laughs> yeah. No. Does a 16 hit? No. Really? Really. Wow. Okay. Uh, that's their turn. Excellent. Excellent. Look so, back over my shoulder. You got to get better at this game, pal. Yeah. Both of them like look at each other and they're like, what is this guy's deal? <laughs> anyway. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, uh, it is now going to be Yui, your turn. All righty. Well, Yui will do like the like very classic ninja move of like wrapping around and like basically do like piggyback riding on this guy's back and just like stabbing him in the chest from behind um roll the hit with advantage he's prone oh. do you get sneak attack damage you also get sneak attack 21 a 21 hits 21 yeah. all righty and then so, you get sneak attack damage with, with him this. prone i'll rebuild that a little bit because i forgot that so basically i just jump behind him i'm just like stabbing him in the back and so that's eight, and then the sneak attack. Five plus four, so that's nine damage. Well, um, this guy uh, is wheezing, bloody beyond repair, uh, has one hit point left. So go ahead and take your second attack if you'd like. I sure would. With advantage. He's prone. Oh, yes. That is so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> that was not um, It's still pretty good, though. Uh, so it's 15? 15 hits. Sweet. So I'll take the last one, like, do, like, a nice knife spinny and just stab him right in the back of the head. All right. Yeah. Just kind of pinning this guy on the ground. You don't even have to roll damage if you don't want to. He's got one HP left. If you just want to describe, <laughs> describe the kill, go for it. Yeah. So I do, like, the knife spinny and just, like, stab him in the back of the head, pushing his head, like, down into the dirt and pulling it out. Turning to to Jack and just like, wow, have you been working on this for a while? You dropped those guys really fast. We should be on a team after this fight as well. I've had some practice. We'll talk after. And with that, Jack, it's your turn. Excellent. We're going to do a quick 180. And any guesses on what we're going to do? My guess fireball. False. We're going to obliterate him with Eldritch, Eldritch Blast again. Blast. <laughs> <No> <laughs> <way>. <laughs> that's going to be a dirty... Nope. Never mind. That's a 25 to hit. Oh, definitely. Definitely yeah. hits. And we'll just do both. Oh, the second one is a 15 to hit. That definitely also hits. Oh, wow. And then damage is 12 from the first one and only 6 on the second one, but 18 total. Go ahead and tell me how you killed this guy with 18 damage. All right. <laughs> um, how you end this battle. Yeah. So Yui's like, we should be on a team. And I'm like, we'll talk later, kid. And I'll do a quick 180 and just have both my hands together, you know, the whole Kamehameha thing. Except I'm like, ha <laughs> <laughs> And I'll just blast them, dude. They all lay dead before you. The magical energy that was coming off of the cultist leader's uh, knives dissipates mm -hmm. and you guys are left within this fey wild field so i'll just be rummaging through like the pockets of these like bodies just kind of flipping them over rummaging through while i talk to jack like wow so what's your name my name is jack kid what's yours my name is yui what are you doing here i guess i was walking skipping really i like to skip in the woods yeah I guess we could stick together for a little bit. I mean, do you have somewhere to go? I, I just go wherever I'm going. Me too, kid. Me too. Now, while you're looking in those pockets, if you find any gold, fork it over. Okay. I will also search bodies. Only looking for gold. Okay, uh, investigation. 14 on my investigation. Oh, no, mine was worse. Uh, that's going to be an 11. All right, Yui, you find 14 gold pieces. Jack, you find 11 gold pieces. All right. So what you're saying is I get 
25 gold pieces. 25? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and I will. Yui will, like, find some gold and hop over and, like, jingle them into his hands. Hey, thanks, Hopping kid. back over, looking through the bodies more. Anything else you want is yours. Wow, all right. They got nothing on them. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise. Low-level bandits. You guys are alone in the Feywild. Uh, Yui, I know that you were looking for your father's knives. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely searching for those with these guys since I know the last place he was was in the lab of the Lambs of the Slaughter. Lambs of Slaughter. So um, your father's knives, uh, his like belt that helped his knife throwing to be uh, better is north of here. You are currently in the waxed woods in the Feywild. Uh, the trees here, both of you have noticed since you've been in the trees for a while, um, used to have this like bl- this like brown residue covering them, but lately they've been healed, and you don't really know who's been healing the trees, but they've been healed miraculously and no longer seem to be dying, and it almost is more springy, but since you're more towards the north of the forest it is getting colder like you guys are on the cusp of the winter court and is it pretty early in the day it is early in the day so the sun is just peeking over the trees there is still dew on the grass excellent what a way to start the morning yeah well i was going over towards this uh old abandoned like lab thing if you want to join me i might as well i didn't have anything planned for today all right well Let's get going. Um, yeah, lead the way, kid. Yeah, I'll start, like, skipping ahead. Okay. I'll start skipping behind. <laughs> okay. Some pixies in the trees are, like, mimicking your skipping, and are like, ha, 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 and then they run off into the forest. I love it. Um, so you guys are skipping for a while. Nice. Um, but like you, uh, you start getting into the, the winter court, and it's getting cold, and you guys are looking at your clothes... You're not, like, the most prepared. Unless you have something to negate this, both of you make me a constitution saving throw. Oh, no. Yeah, all right. Well, as we go through, I'll switch from, like, my beach attire that I was basically wearing of, like, that white shirt, the rose, uh, and just change into, like, a nice, like, black jacket. Yeah, go ahead and describe um, your magic item that allows you to do that. So I have glamoured studded leather armor, which... Gives you a plus one to AC along with the ability to just basically change your clothes into whatever you want. Nice. Which is a fantastic. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. And so, and then you are making a constitution 22. Save, Jack. Okay. With a 22, you heavily succeed. You are, you're feeling toasty. It's like you've got like a hot chocolate between your hands on like oh, yeah. one of those cold, brisk days. Um, but you guys, um, the trees start turning into candy canes, licorice sticks, Mm -hmm. very tall, candied, you know, hard candy boulders. It's uh, a winter wonderland, seemingly, as you've stumbled into some twisted version of Candyland. Excellent. I'm here for it. You guys are traveling north for some time. Uh, Yui, um, make me a history check to see if you remember where this lab specifically is. Oh, it did. At least I know the interior of it very well. I don't know Mm. maybe the surroundings quite as much, but apparently decently well because 16. A 16, yes. You remember past this candied forest, there's a candied volcano that has uh, glassed glassed over candy lava. And just at the cusp of the northwest side of the lava, there is a secret hatch that leads into this laboratory that the um, that the lambs of slaughter used to experiment on children similar to you. I think Jack's going to ask a few questions, actually. Um, um, number one, who were those guys? I don't know, but I do know my dad thought they were dangerous. What tipped you off? Um, Was I it the know. knives? Yeah, sometimes <laughs> they attacked us. Ah, yeah, that sounds pretty dangerous, kid. Um, but you don't know who they are? Just that they're dangerous. Not really. They've they, just always kind of been around, I guess. They said they owned you? Yeah, they say that. <laughs> That's a good attitude, kid. <laughs> I like it. Anyways, I know that there's some really nice knives in here. So All right. there's like a hatch that we should go check out. Yeah. And, and I'll be leading him that way. 
So what brings you to the Fae? I kind of just wander, explore, occasionally run into my dad sometimes. Wow, that's exciting. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> that's not I didn't expect you to say it was exciting. Where does your dad usually stay? I wish I knew. Maybe I'd see him more. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. Yeah, no, he wanders too. It's good. We're good. We're bros. But, you know, be cool if I knew him better. Either way. That's good. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to stay entertained, though, and yeah. currently you're providing Same. the entertainment, kid. Well, it's our life, and dang it, it better be fun, right? That's right. <laughs> Let's go. So you guys arrived at this volcano. I would also like to heal. Yes. Uh, tell me how you heal. Uh, I mean, if we, I assume we'll take a little rest. Set up a little camp. Yui, like, plops himself down. Have some breakfast. There's candy <laughs> all around you. It's edible, so you can have as much candy as you freaking want. So. No parents to tell you no, guys. While we're uh, taking a break, Yui will pull out the nice little vial around his neck and take a good old swig, which will heal him all the way, baby. Nice. nice. So I drink it, but then I'll, like, swing around my knife and, like, stab my lower thigh and, like, fill the vial back up. Nice. <laughs> Jack's going to look at you Casually. wide-eyed and just be, uh, what? It's like a potion. Made of your blood? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. This nice guy, uh, ranger guy gave it to me, and I'll like put it back around my neck, and then I'll like almost like start drawing with the blood on my like leg as it's like running down, humming a nice little tune. Anyone ever tell you you're a weird kid? I guess I don't talk to people that often, but I've heard it. Ah, okay. <laughs> Just curious. No reason. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys walk for a while um, and heal up. You eventually make it to... It, it, it's about a four-hour journey that you walk to make it to this um, this hole in the ground that you know of, Yui. And you find it just where it was before. However, cobwebs line the wood. Like, it, it looks like it hasn't been used for a while. Well... They used to keep this place looking real nice. I guess management's gone downhill, and I'll, like, swing open the latch. <laughs> you swing open this latch. Dust flies in the air. The smell <coughs> of, like, I don't know, like 40 years of dust seemingly hits you in the face as both of you remember uh, your uh, time rings that keep you in place. Uh, in the time that you were in. Mm -hmm. um, but you are descending down this ladder now into this this laboratory of the Lambs of Slaughter. Excellent. Is it dark? It is dark. Good thing I have dark vision. Uh, it's <laughs> dim light, so it's hard to see, but not impossible to see. Uh, you reach the bottom of this ladder, however, and you are in a so room... With me not having dark vision, I totally just, like, latch on, like, to, like, like, I'm just, like, holding your shirt and, like, following behind with, like, a knife out. That's fine. <laughs> I just let it happen. Scraping the wall, like, shing. I'm still, like, kind of skipping, humming a little bit. <laughs> just holding on to my cloak. <laughs> you enter into this dungeon. It is dusty as ever. But as you get lower... It seems like maybe the custodian just didn't really care about this passageway because you enter into a room with four distinct pillars, each 10 by 10 feet, and they are entirely made of these colorful Rubik's cubes that are all solved. Oh, no. They're all solved and put in a specific order, and you see a female with a jester's hat on Ooh. holding a dead rat walking back and forth. She looks to, she looks to be middle-aged woman. Okay. Pacing back and forth. Concern in her face. Yeah, there's concern in my face too. Um, and is it still just dimly lit? The whole, like, there's no light yes. sources at all? No, it's uh, still dimly lit. I mean, it's not terribly dark, but it seems that this jester is one of the few people that can't see. Gotcha. Does she seem to, like, hear us come down? Because we weren't really being quiet. She notices you, mm -hmm. um, but she seems to be too nervous about something that's going on to 
to say anything. Uh, I will certainly say something, though. Uh, hey! What are you doing down here? What's going on? Oh, um, hi, uh, oh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna uh, get killed. Why? Oh, well... We're not gonna kill you. No, not you. Um, oh, good. I'm not... I, my name is Valentine. I'm... Uh, I'm the court jester around here. You could probably see my dangly, my dangly hat. I can. I love it. Thank you. Um, uh, are you familiar with the artist formerly known as Giant? That depends. What are they known as now? The artist formerly known as Giant. Oh, my mistake. No, then. They're a symbol. <laughs> yeah? Why are you so worried about being dead? It's not like you're going to feel anything. Well, uh, you, you eat. Shut up. <laughs> I enjoy living, but this is Ratatat, and the artist formerly known as Giant has this beloved giant rat, and every time it dies, I'm in charge of getting a new one, but have you guys seen it? It's the middle of winter. We're in the winter court. There's no rats for miles. How am I supposed to leave without him suspecting that I've killed his precious giant rat? I can't just replace it. What am I going to do? You could just leave. Where would I go? I have no money. This is my only job. Well, I'll give her, I'll give her 10 gold. Just be like, well, here you go. Bye. And then I'll like skip past her and then realize I can't see in the dark and go back. <laughs> she looks down at she looks down at the 10 gold. Make me a persuasion check. All right. Well, a 20. A natural 20? Mm -hmm. Okay, with a natural 20, uh she's like, "Hey, I have a better idea. Can I show you around down here? I mean, it's dark. You can't look. You can I I I I know my way around here. I've been down here 15 years." You look like you're not even 15 years old, kid. As she looks at you, Yui, and she's like, unless you don't want me to come with you, and in that case, at least let me repay you. And then she walks over to one of the Rubik's Cubes, and she flips one square, and all of the Rubik's Cubes unsolve themselves. Oh, no. And in, like, a clattering away, all of them fall to the ground. All of the blocks fall to the ground. And she hands you a six-pack of soda. Oh, I take the soda really fast. Yeah, they're soda cans. Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. As you look at this soda box, a magic mouth appears on the outside of it, and it reads aloud to you. Get ready for your taste buds to explode as Slam Cola is back and flavor packed more than ever before with the real arcane sugar. Get yours today in your choice between Arcane Slam Classic or now available with w -w 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 Wild Cherry Explosion. Effects of drinking Slam Cola as a bonus action allows one action surge per can of Slam Cola, which grants one additional action on top of the regular action. Harmful side effects include suffering one level of exhaustion one minute after ingesting a can of Slam Cola. Just like that. <laughs> Just like that. The, the commercial <laughs> voice. I will look on subsides. in awe. <laughs> How did you do that voice? The magic, <laughs> the magic mouth on the can goes oh, away. <laughs> oh, so you can uh, within a minute one action surge that uh, that doesn't cost your action surge, but it costs you a level of exhaustion after that minute is up. And it's not continual action surges; it's just the one. Fucking jacked, Ooh. bro! Wow. Well, thank you. This is really nice. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, the 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 can kind of tells you what it did, but. I hope that six is enough. I, I guess, do you need me around? I, I can go? Well, you said show us around. Yeah. I, I could. And do I have, like, a general description I can give her? Yes. Uh, so you start telling her about the laboratory that your father used to work in, that you were uh, looking through the files to um, where your father and you were ambushed because you were correct you were ambushed while trying to look up things about the lambs right, of slaughter yeah. to undermine them and i would give her like a very detailed description right like, so yeah you're telling her all about like how the lambs of slaughter trained you as a child but your father got you out and then uh your father was like we need to go back and undermine this organization so that they can't get you back yui and then you went back and then um as you got back your father died trying to get the information while you were hiding 
And so you were able to narrowly escape as you watched your father's life drain from him. And you explained to her with way more details than you needed to because you're a child. And then she's like, oh, yeah, I know where the laboratory is. I can show you. <laughs> <laughs> she's been here for 15 years. 15 she probably years. knows who Yui is. That's true. Although maybe she, you know. Uh, she actually does not. She's, mm. more, inter- she's more of the she entertainer. Wrote-y. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like see these bells? Like I, I like do little dances. It's pretty fun. I don't know. Do you guys know about the the magic sewers that we're in? Nope. Welcome to the sewers. <laughs> Thanks. So I used to be actually part of the Lambs of Slaughter. I am no longer. Um, this wow. has been taken over by uh, the artist formerly known as Giant and his his gang of uh, misfit giants that they uh, you know, they they basically run the Feywild, but they, they came by and they kicked the Lambs of Slaughter out so this place is basically just their little playhouse now well, we love playhouses. Yeah, we, I like we? a playhouse. I hope you, I hope you're okay with bad smells, because let's go to the sewer. And she, like, opens the door, and you just see this green and blue vibrant colored water flowing through these sewers. And it doesn't look as dirty as you were thinking, but it does smell as dirty as you were thinking. <sighs> so, like... So we gotta walk through the water. Gotta walk through the water. Are the walls slippery? The walls are slippery. (laughs) Of course, (laughs) evaporated water in this hot sewer. (laughs) Well, with it being hot water, I'll like immediately change my clothes into like classic swimwear. Got like (laughs) the beach shorts on, like with like all the flowers again. Still that classic red belt and the red uh the red ankle bracelet so it's like you know nice rosy swim shorts got the color match with my red hair so as you change into it uh valentine like backs up and gives you like the universal studios like as you can see on your left there were rubik's cubes they're gone now um but as we continue for move along move along this is arcane water and it helps us it helps us as in the giants. I guess I'm no longer employed here. Um, it helps us to to transport throughout the uh, Feywild. See, um, at the ends of each of these hallways, there are portals to e- uh, to different parts of the Feywild that you can transport to. Can somebody say fast travel, baby? <laughs> wow, that's really nice. So she leads you along, and she's like, well. Uh, We only have to walk about 10 feet, 15 feet in the sewer. And then uh, up ahead, as you can see, uh, we have the lava lamp that is powering this arcane water. You see a giant red lava lamp in this like roundabout of sewer that's touching all of this water. And the water that's hitting it is brownish and like gray, dull, grossish color. And then as soon as it hits the lava lamp, it turns into this green and blue magic energy that's, that flows away into the waterfalls that you assume to be the teleport points. And she leads you out of the water and into a hallway. Um, and she says, well, uh, this hallway uh, isn't really special at all. Uh, watch your step. Watch your step. Both of you make me a dexterity saving throw. That's a five. Nine? Oh, yeah. Nine. Uh, she says, watch your step. Watch your step. And both of you are uh, accidentally slip over this like little pressure plate and take four points of damage each. What kind of damage? Uh, piercing. Okay. As these little darts come out and she's like, ah, I'm sorry. I, I, I forget that other people don't know where those things are. I've been here a long time. Anyway... And she, like, continues backing up, and she says, Okay, now this next part of the tour, we need to be really quiet. Rye Guy, the wrestler, is in this next room. Is his name Rye Guy because he's made of bread? No, he just rises to the occasion. Rye Guy. But he's not bread. He's not bread. He still rises, though. He's kind of like yeast, because yeast rises. Yeah. But he's not bread. But he's not bread. Okay, confirmed not bread. Okay, carry on. He rises to an occasion. 
So, I'm gonna like switch my clothes to like black and white suit with like still the red belt, <laughs> red tie, red ankle bracelet. <laughs> Love it. Okay, I need both of you to make me a dexterity or a, a stealth check oh, as you're no. walking through this next room. Eighteen. Six. Oh no. Uh, with a six, you creak on this floorboard, and Rye Guy sits all the way up. And as you look at Rye Guy, hi, my name's Yui Otto. <laughs> He, he looks at you. You see this massive ogre sits up and he says, Hey, Valentine, make me laugh. And she's like, ah, ha, ha, and she slaps you in the back of the head. Uh, <laughs> you I'm going to try to do like a front flip off the like slap like, in the oh, back like of the head. Oh, like a slapstick thing. Roll me a performance check. Oh. <laughs> Eleven. 11 oh, no. uh, even with an 11 uh, he leans back in his and in, in back into his bed and goes and lets out this big chesty chortle of like a oh, 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 oh Valentine you know how to get him um anyway you you tell uh, you tell Tom the bomb that uh, we're we're up next in 15 minutes but I need to get my beauty rest anyway good night Good night. <laughs> and he lays back down to into his bed. It's a 10 foot long bed. This guy is massive. He uh he has re- like lucha libre mask on mm-hmm. and total like outfitted uh with white shoulder pads on uh this huge chest torso combo of like just m- rippling muscles and he's just hot. Yeah, hot basically. Um, anyway, but he lays back down and goes back to sleep. Is he the only one in there? He is the only person in there. Quick survey of the room. Do I see any gold? You do not. Okay. Now, also, as he lays back down, I'll whisper, Sleep well, right, guy? Thank you. I'm trying to go to sleep. I'm sorry. Sleep well. Goodbye. Okay, goodbye. I'll shuffle off. Okay, I'll shuffle off to sleep. Good. (laughs) (laughs) wow this place is a lot more pleasant than i remember it (laughs) as i like continue skipping along through hushed tones valentine is like okay so this next room is the rusted weapon room now this is where our challengers come to get their rusted weapons to fight the champion of the arena. Now, the rusted weapons are because of, well, we, we live in the sewers and, and things evaporate and become, you know, rust our equipment. But it is also because the champion gets the finest equipment, but the challengers have to get rusted equipment to show that they are worthy. Wow. Where's wow. the fun in that? And I'll, like, skip in, change attire to, like, very medieval, like, you know, like tunic and grab like the first rusty weapon I can find and start like swinging it. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Um, and then she says, okay, now Rye Guy, as she closes the door behind her so that Rye Guy doesn't wake up, um, she's like, now Rye Guy, um, he's the nicer of the two. Tom the Bomb, uh, as his name kind of states, is a little bit of a short use type of a guy got an explosive personality he has a very explosive personality mm. he does not like outsiders um me either he may kill you um bet bet so um i don't know what you want to do but he is in this next room well if he wants to play he should know i'm pretty good yeah me too so you guys stare at this door not really knowing what's coming next but all you know is that you are ready for anything. That is where we're going to end our session. My name is Cade, and I'm the host and dungeon master of this Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition adventure, and I'm joined here by the characters to my left. Jameson as Jack. Danny playing Yui. All right, awesome. Now remember, uh, if you enjoy our show, please leave us a review. It really helps us get into better rankings so that we can get into more people's listening libraries, as well as go check out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash knocked. That's K-N-O-C-K-E-D. And check out our awesome patron benefits, including being able to say our intro. And with that, we hope you remember that when life knocks you flat on your back, all you have to do is keep rolling. And we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.